Section 2 of Chapter 2 talks about the properties of water. And there are some unique characteristics of water, and we'll be doing a lab where we're going to be looking at the different unique characteristics of water. Water is what's known as a polar molecule. Polar molecules have a slightly charged region, so there's going to be a positive and a negative end of the molecule. So you can see this water molecule right here, right there, it has the negative, and at this end, it has the positive. So what ends up happening in this bond is the electrons are going to spend a little bit more time around the oxygen than it does the hydrogen. So that's why you end up with a, a slightly negative charge and a slightly positive charge on the uh, opposite ends of it. So that's what it means to be a polar molecule is that it's going to, uh, again, have a end that is slightly positive and an end that's slightly negative. Nonpolar molecules means that they do not have a charged area. So it's there's not going to be a positive or a negative on one end or the other. So an example of a uh, nonpolar molecule would be like oils and things like that. Hydrogen bonds form uh, between slightly positive hydrogen atoms and slightly negative atoms. So you would have another water molecule would come in right here, and it would be the hydrogen end would connect there. And so that would be a hydrogen bond that would be formed between that. So anything that has a negative or positive end would end up having that uh, possibility of happening. Um, this is going to lead to one of the unique characteristics of water in that it can dissolve lots of things, is if it comes across anything else that is polar, it will make these bonds and help dissolve that, uh, that, that uh, molecule or that compound whatever it has come across. So that uh, that is uh, leads to a unique characteristic of water, and a lot of the polarity gives water some of its unique characteristics. So here are some more unique characteristics of, of water. Uh, it has high specific heat. So what that means is it takes a lot of energy to break those bonds between the water molecules when it's being heated up and then it's going to hold that heat for a long time so this is why like if you put a pot on the stove and you turn it on and you go and touch that pot in like five seconds after it's been sitting on high you're going to feel it being really hot that metal is going to be really hot but if you put water in there and you crank it on high and you come up to that water after five seconds and put your hand in the water, it's not going to be burning you. Um, so that is what it, what the high specific heat means, is it takes a lot of energy to raise its temperature. And it also, again, holds the heat for a long time. That's why if you are like, oh, I'm going to let this soup sit here or this drink cool down a little bit and you let it set for five minutes, you're like, oh, it's got to be good. And you take it in your mouth and you burn yourself. That's because of the high specific heat. Uh, cohesion is another unique characteristic of water. Um, it is going to uh, be where um, the water molecules are attracted to one another. And so that's like sort of being narcissistic. It only wants to be around itself and wants to be attracted to itself. So this is what you end up seeing like as water droplets go down a window and all of a sudden they get sucked into that other water droplet. That is cohesion. Adhesion is being attracted to other things. So it would be the water being able to stick to the glass. So that is the example of adhesion. Um, some other unique characteristics that aren't mentioned here in this section, um, but I will mention in class as well, is water is less dense as a solid than it is as a liquid. That's why ice floats. Most other uh, things when they are solid are more dense, and so they're going to end up sinking. And then um, going along with this, uh, with the cohesion adhesion 
high uh, specific heat is that it's a universal can be considered a universal solvent because it dissolves lots of different things. So those are the unique characteristics of water. Many com com compounds, like I said, are able to be dissolved in water. A solution is formed when one substance dissolves another. So solution is a homogeneous mixture, so that means it's spread evenly throughout the, the liquid. Um, the thing that is doing the dissolving is called the solvent. So in this case, we would be talking about water being the solvent. And the thing that is being dissolved is called the solute. So um, like if you're dissolving salt, salt would be the solute. And water would be the dis would be the solvent. Like substances dissolve like. So polar solvents dissolve polar solutes. Uh, any ionic compound is going to end up being able to be dissolved by water. So. Uh, because it's going to have negative and positives, and the water will be able to make bonds with those. So that's why it's going to be that way. Nonpolar solvents dissolve nonpolar solutes. So that, again, is like with like. So water and oil don't mix. It doesn't dissolve oil um, because oil is nonpolar. Water is polar. So polar substances and nonpolar substances generally remain separate. If you try to mix them up, they're going to separate back out. So that's like the salad dressing that you would end up finding in the fridge. An acid releases a hydrogen ion when it dissolves in water. So when you are looking at whether something's an acid, you're looking to see how many hydrogen ions are in that that solution. And if it has a high amount of hydrogen ions, it means it's going to be a strong acid. So that would be a pH, pH less than seven. So one through six are going to be considered acids. So and that's what it's showing you there on on this, I guess you could go to zero as well. So it's going to have uh, a high H plus in there. So the hydrogen ion. Bases are going to remove hydrogen ions from a solution. And when it does that, um, it's going to be usually OH that it's looking for, or it's going to be uh, low hydrogen ion concentration. You'll have a high. OH, which is called hydroxy, and you'll end up seeing uh, a lot of OH, which is OH negative, is what you'd end up having. So anything that is a pH greater than seven is going to be considered a base. Uh, with bases, uh, these are going to be the things where if you get it on your skin, it's going to feel slippery. So things like soap would be in the base category. So a neutral solution has a pH of 7, and pure water is going to be neutral. So those are the unique characteristics of water.